and welcome to Lincolnshire Fencraft's Needle Felting Tutorials. Today I am going to teach you how to make this um, really cute little cactus felting needle holder. Or you can use it as a pin cushion but it's perfect for just sitting in your, your felting needles whilst you're working. You can make a whole range, there's lots of different styles. This is the style we're going to be working on today but um, you can really oops, go to town with these and make whatever style you like because I mean you know if you if you look at sort of pictures of cactuses you'll see they come in all shapes and sizes and my favorite is part is the beautiful sort of crazy flowers that you you get on them which sort of jar with the environment but they're they're absolutely beautiful you can be really precise with the spines that we're putting on or you can go really random. It's entirely up to you, it's your design, so I'll just show you the, 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 the really simple way of making it. And then you can display them or use them as however you wish. Okay, the first thing we're going to start with, I'll just take this little pot out, is we are going to start with the base because if you're putting it into a pot, whatever pot you're using, or maybe a teacup, because they look great in teacups as well, just make sure that the uh, base fits the pot that it's going into. So it's always best to start with this, and start off with smaller than you think you need, and then you can always add some more if you need to, which is the general rule of needle felting. It's a really simple tutorial, and you will need... Well, I have a se selection of the walls I'm going to use, but you know, you only need two or three different colours, just some contrasting colours. You may put the flowers on or not. But the thing that I would definitely advise using for this is the, this is a barbecue skewer that I have, a wooden skewer or anything that's similar, because this is going to make it really easy to create those nice cactus limbs. Right, so let's move all of that out of the way here we need one needle so you just need your felting mat whether it be a hessian mat a foam mat a wool mat whatever you're using I always advise putting some kind of topper um, over it when you work because what it will do is it will save the mat this foam mat will last forever if you use a topper on it so um, it's you know really really good for the environment and also it's very cost-effective any topper will do as long as it's a wool blend. It doesn't have to be 100% wool, but as long as it's got a little bit of wool in it, it's usually better. Acrylic does work, but I do like to work on um, something with a wool blend. Right, that's it, let's get going. So the first thing I am going to start with, as I said, is this, this base. And what I'm using here is I've just kind of got this, this loose core wool. You can use any, a core wool is just what you use in the middle. And I've got this nice sort of lumpy core wool. If you are working from the kit or pattern, then you will have a list of wools in there and also a size guide to work on. But that's only if you're working from the kit or the pattern. You don't actually need it. Most important thing is make sure that base is going to sit in the pot that you are going to put it in. And it needs to sit in snugly because it doesn't want to waggle about. Okay, so take your core wool, it could be it could be any core wool, any sort of cheap um, wool that you want to use and just roll it and pull everything in to the centre and we're going to just roughly shape this. It will be lumpy, it won't be perfectly shaped and that's fine because we're going to wrap it in some wool batting once we've secured it. You're aiming for sort of a little, just a little round sort of donut bread bun shape. As, like I said, as large or as small as you wish, depending on the, the pot size or the base it's going on to. You will need to have it sitting on something or glued to something because um, it, you know, it won't stand on its own. Can you see how quickly that, that just felt it together? And that's all you really need. So you've got your smooth side here, and then you've got this area underneath, which is a, a bit rougher, where you've just pulled everything to the centre. And then before you do anything else, just take your pot and make sure that's going to 
squish it. Remember, it's going to have another layer on top, so it's going to be slightly bigger, but you want to be able to sort of squish it in with your fingers. So that's a little bit loose, but once we've got our top layer on, that will be absolutely perfect. And you make sure you can squish it in so it's quite tight. The next part is to take a flat piece of wool. It doesn't have to be um, flat wool batting. You can just use carded wool lengths as well. Just spread them out using the same way. But I like to use the, the flat batting because I think it wraps around really nicely. And you're not going to need much. Just open that up. In fact, I don't think that wants opening up. I think it wants to stay like that. Lay that on your mat and then this base here, if you lay that face down, so the smooth side is down, so it's all the smooth sides are going to be in one place. So this is not going to be visible, this is going to be inside your pot. And then just start to pull over, pull it quite tight, but not so tight that you split it, towards the middle and just felt a few times. We do this because what we want to do is keep this area nice and smooth and kind of needle mark free. I've got quite a lot going on here, so I'm just going to pull this other side in. And felt that in. And here, I'm just going to pull it off. Carded wool pulls apart really easily because of the short fibres compared to, say, the, um, the wool tops. And then just use your fingers just to pull those sides in and make sure that the sides are nice and smooth as well. So all those lumps and bumps have been moved towards the centre. I'm just going to take that off because we don't need it. Pull that in nice and secure. If you've got some baldish um, spots here, we can cover those up. But I'm not too concerned about that because that, again, is going to go into the pot. So we're not, it's not even going to be visible. And then just bring all those fibres to the centre and keep using your needle just to draw up those edges. Don't bend your needle as you're doing this. This is just a standard um, 38 star needle. Good, strong needle. It's all you need. And that will be used for the entire project and then just you see if you turn it over and then you can actually just shape it with your hands but don't worry too much about that because as I said you're going to squish it now you see how much bigger than that pot it is and that's what you want because you want to be able to sort of squish that in once your cactus is attached to it and that is it that is your base ready so you've got your core wool and you have your carded wool batting on top. So I'll pop that to one side. Now we're going to start on the cactus itself. And this is really easy. You can use wool top or carded wool. And it's quite a small base, so you don't want to, to make them too big. But again, that's a decent size. You can see that's the size as it's sitting in my hand there. So you'll have again, you'll have the core wool underneath covered with this, this top area of carded um, wool or, or wool tops, doesn't matter. So just take, you can, we'll, we'll use that, I'll just take a little piece off. You can split that down the middle if you want to as well and do it that way. So I've just got a piece there, won't use all of that, unlikely, but we'll see how we go. So just start, now this is going to be the centre of the cactus, so this is going to be the centrepiece and this wants to be bigger than the other, the other limbs that you're going to be attaching. So pop your wool around that, that wooden skewer, with carded, if you're using carded wool, hold it quite close to the skewer because it, it's short fibres and if you have your hand here and you pull it, it will just pull away. Doesn't matter, you just add some more. I'll, I'll, I'll deliberately do it when I'm halfway through so you can see. There we go, so let's just twizzle that round. And there's very little felting going on here. Just pull it quite tight so you can see. That's nice and tight. And keep your thumb and finger here 
at the base to stop it sliding around and then just carry on working down and then just hold it in place with your fingers keep those fingers out of the way and just felt down the side of that wooden stick and you want to avoid hitting the stick with the needle just so you don't break it and then continue to wrap that wool around keep it going you can change hands if you want and make sure it's nice and secure keep going keep going and stop again fingers to either side just tacking it just so it holds and I want this to be a bit longer but keep going keep going and you're basically crossing over so you sort of you can work at a diagonal if you want to no need to but just make sure you're not sitting in the same spot all the time and you're aiming to get the end of the cactus bigger than the base so the base is going to be the narrow part And don't worry again about lumps and bumps because they are going to be covered up and we can tidy them up as well. So then just roll that round in your hand and then we're going to turn that there and we're just going to tack that down just so that ends not flopping about and then we can start to create the shape. So go in at the end and just felt into where the skewer is sitting and then go diagonally around the edges with your needle and then that create instead of flattening it you're creating that nice soft edge. And what we want to do is, if we can get this base nice and firm, what that means is we don't have to do any shaping when we get the carded wool wrapped around it. And again, that will reduce all of the needle marks. And can you see now how that's really beginning to take shape? And I just think, I'm looking at this, I'm thinking it's a little bit short. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some more wool and that's perfect. I'm going to split this now just to thin it out a little bit because one of the key things with needle felting is always that you can you can add more but it's much more difficult especially if you felted it to take, to take it away if you just tack something on gently that's fine okay so I've just wrapped that round can you see there just wrap that new piece there and I'm just going to diagonally felt that onto the existing wool I'm not really going to bother too much with this top here I may need to widen it we'll see and I'm just going to work continue to work down just to lengthen and don't worry about that bit sticking out we'll felt that in keep that going keep that going keep that going just come back up there just to even that shape out yeah I think that's going to be absolutely fine so and then just pull off that wool, twizzle it around in your hands and let's get this properly attached now. So working at a diagonal angle but always keeping that needle straight. Let's get these little bits in. Which direction do they want to be in? There. That's better.
there we go and see up there so that's a pretty decent shape I think it just needs a little bit more work there which I'm going to do again go diagonally so you're just tidying up these top areas now and then you can go down the side as well with this little bit you've just added onto the bottom just to make sure that the middle of that is securely felted and let's have a look yeah yep I think that's good it doesn't have to be too much wider at the top but just a nice sort of tapering from the top down to a narrow base now we're going to leave that on there just going to work that a little bit more take your time with this it doesn't take long to do but it's definitely worth working this shape and getting it right I mean to be honest it's going to be covered in spines um, so you're not going to see quite a few bits of the the areas that we're working on but it's still nice to have that nice shape to work with there we go next we're going to take our carded wool lengths you can use again you could use batting for this that would be fine I've got um, a contrasting color here so that's the color of my base so I want something that's a contrasting green otherwise it's going to get a little bit lost and you start either end so this is your carded wool I've got here wool tops would work as well just attach that first part to the area you're working on just to secure it and then you're going to gently going to pull some of that off you're going to gently pull that around helps if I move the mat out of the way now if it's looking a bit thick what you can actually do is you can actually spread that out thin that out a little bit or even split it down the middle again and work that around you see how that's covering that and keep it nice and tight so keep your hands your fingers close to the the cactus that you've made so that it doesn't pull away and we'll go there and then diagonally just tack it on we're not going to overdo this we're just going to do it till it holds just through that top layer we're not trying to push it right through to the center we just want that top layer to hold so as you can see I'm just going diagonally and just holding it on I just want to show you if you pull it too tight and that pulls off that's fine wrap the loose part on make sure it's it's just felted on and also where there's any crossovers as you bring that wall around and down the cactus make sure you felt those in so that there's no sort of visible lines Take that out. so if you have pulled that off that's fine just pop some back on there we go just tack it on gently and you won't be able to tell I'm just going to spread that out a little bit and bring that all the way down to the base so it's going to be fully covered and just leave it there then felt again working all the way down and if there are any needle marks that you know sort of really visible needle marks you can just smooth those out with your hands when you are done see how that's come along nicely here now we're just going to go to the base 
Now, where this is going to attach to the actual base of the cactus in the pot, I'm going to leave it slightly looser just because it's easier to attach it and it gives us more fresh wool to use so we can secure it nicely. So this bit here is going to sit in the middle of that base. So leave that a bit looser. And then I'm just going to work my way down. I'm just going to narrow this bottom end slightly. This is why you always sort of start smaller than you think because it, it does, you know, does get quite large once you start adding layers of wool on top. But this is the only thing that's actually going to sit attached to your base because um, the limbs obviously are going to be attached to the this main limb here. go and then we can take that off the skewer now we've got here and we can finish shaping that up and there we go so on mine I have two more limbs so you can add as many as you want so we'll add a couple more to this what you want to do now is make two more limbs that are slightly smaller than the main one just a little third one there if I wanted and then what we're going to do is when we add when we attach those we're going to sort of slightly shape them so we give that really nice sort of traditional cactus looking shape and then if you wanted to you could make a, an extra tiny one and you could have that sort of coming off somewhere else which looks quite nice so I would stop the video now while you just go off and make a couple more limbs to attach and then come back and I'll show you how to attach them and then we'll add some detail and also when you do that make sure you you just pull any where it was through the skewer you got a little hole there just make sure you tease any wool over Okay, so pause the video and then come back. So to attach the limbs, we take the biggest part that we made, which was the, the first part, and then we are going to attach the smaller limbs at different points. So let's see, that one's slightly longer. So I think I'll start that one just there, and then I'll maybe have that one there. We can do that with it, yep. So hold the limb to the side of your center piece and be really careful with your fingers here. Just trying to get that a good angle for you to see it. There we go. And then just get that attached. Don't worry about neatness where it is. Pull that down, push that down a little bit. And this is where that loose wool that you left at the bottom, which is just a little bit looser, it comes in really handy. And then what you can do is you can go through from this side as well, right the way through, don't keep coming out and just hold it there in one spot and you can grab the wool from the other side as well. I'll just push that through so you can see that needle coming through there. It doesn't want to come through but I'm just showing you where it's coming through. So you can you can get those limbs attached from different areas. And then go back here and let's see how it is. So it's not doing too bad but it's still quite floppy. So I'm really going to sort of go at it. Now you want to make sure you've got a little bit left of the main cactus here to attach to the pot base. So 
So make sure, so we've only got a little bit attached there. Now we're just going to work slightly up. So we're going to attach it so it sort of holds about five mils, you know, a centimetre tops where it's actually attached. So we want a bigger surface area of attachment here to make sure that that's nice and secure. And what that also does as you're doing that, can you see how that's changing that shape slightly so it looks a bit more organic rather than you've just sort of stuck it on which is what we want can you see now how that is beginning to become a lot firmer and all these lines and marks we're creating here don't worry about those because what we can do is just put some fresh wool on top of there felt it very gently on and they will disappear but this needs to be nice and firmly attached. That's better, so you can see. And then what we can do is we can actually push that down. And what you can also do is you can bend it like so and actually felt through that bend just from underneath in a couple of different areas. And you can see there how we've created that nice cactus shape. So that is one limb attached. The next one, put it at a slightly different angle. So you really want to be higher up here. But I think we'll probably go to make sure that it's not bigger than that. It can be bigger, I don't suppose it matters. But I am going to make the bend a little more pronounced on that. So again, I'm going to start here, slightly higher than the other one. Can you see how that's holding? And then we'll bring it down slightly once it's firmly attached. So carry on with attaching those limbs. I might add another little one. We'll shall see. And once you've done that, come back to the video and we'll start adding the details. Okay, so your limbs should be attached now. I've tidied this one up a little bit. I've just added some fresh wool around, but I'll show you on this one how I did it. Really, really simple, very small piece of the same colour wool that you're using and just wrap it around the base where you've actually attached it and just felt it gently around and this is just going to be gently felted on and you can actually use your needle just to create that separation line around here again going back at a diagonal angle so it all looks to be part of the same thing and then inside, just use your needle to go down inside to tidy up any loose areas. And you can also use your needle to just draw the wool along to reduce any marks. And then bring that around this side and up along the limb and that just tidies that up and then just use your needle again just to create that separation mark there. There we go. And you can also, if you wanted to, use your fingers just to tidy up any areas if you see there's any sort of severe looking needle marks. But again, most of this is going to be covered up so I wouldn't be too precious over it. And there we go, we're ready to add some detail. As you can see on this one, we've got these, these lines, these details which separate um, the limbs into segments. And then what that also allows us to do is have this really neat line of spines as well. So we'll add that on. Now for this, I do recommend using a wool top. You don't have to, but it's just easier to work with. And what you want to take is a very, very, thin piece. I'll just pull that off and then I'll thin it out even more. And the reason I like using wool top for this is because it's it doesn't um, break like 
carded wool does because the fibres are much longer. So we don't even need that much. You really are talking very thin wisps. And then just roll the centre of it in between your fingers just to mat it together a little. Sit it on top of your cactus. Hold either side and then straight down through the middle of that thin wisp of wool you've just laid on top. And there you go, you can see the mark I've made there. Don't worry, I'm going to pop a flower on here so you won't see any of that. Then come around the other side and do this before you actually attach it to the base because um, you can bring all the, the loose parts down. Hold it quite firmly at the bottom because you want it nice and secure and just go down and just a few pokes with that needle just to secure it. And then the same on the other side. Pull it quite tight so you actually can see the indentations there. Just wants to hold. And down to the base. You can see we've got that nice separation there. And then repeat that process. But this time, going the opposite way. So again, so you've got to then got to sort of crisscross on the top and felt that in. Just let it go slightly loose so that it's actually getting inside the top of that cactus. There we go. And then take that down the side. So you will end up with a separation of four pieces. You could do more, you could do eight, you could do six. I've just gone for four. There we go. And then you repeat that for the other limbs of the cactus. Just make sure that's nicely down. Don't worry about those loose bits. We can trim those off later. And then we can tidy all these limbs up as well and reshape them once we've we've got everything in place. So carry on with the with the other um, separations, the other segments on the limbs, and then we'll work on some spikes. Now your limbs are attached and you have this nice detail here. So you've got these segments, mine are in fours, as you can see there. What I want to do now is before I add any more detail, I want to attach it actually to the base because I don't want to damage all the sort of hard work that we're going to, to put in when we create these really nice spines and flowers. So I find the best way to do this is smooth side up. So your cactus is going to go into that smooth area. You can start working from the sides with your needle like so or you can work from the top or from the bottom of the base and into the base of the cactus it doesn't really matter it will wobble about for ages you see what I'm doing there I'm pushing that through and it will wobble about for ages but that's fine and then it's a bit fiddly but once you've got the first few bits attached, it will then hold. So can you see what I'm doing here? Just bend that over a little bit. I'm going through the base of the cactus into the pot base. You see how that's holding now? So I'm just going to move that around. You want to be at the base of the cactus because you don't want to sort of 
spoil the shape that you've created and you also want to make sure that you've still got that trunk visible and it's going to feel really heavy sort of too big for the base which it is but it, it won't be once it's sat in the pot because you're going to tuck it in all nice and snug and that's going to hold really well so keep working around As you can see, once you've got it going, it's really, really easy. It's just fiddly for the first few sort of seconds, really, until you catch all those fibres start to tangle together. And it wants to hold nice and firm because it doesn't want to wobble about. And then we can we can reshape that as well because it's, it's beginning to look like a little bit like a donut now because we're, we're sort of pushing into it. But that's okay. And then you can also now hold it and go through the, the base as well again. So what that's doing is it's, it's tangling the fibres both ways. Wool is, is kind of scales and they all sort of interlock together a bit. I suppose it's a bit like, um, I don't know if it is like Velcro, but, but that's what I'm liking in it likening it to so that's looking nice and sturdy now but I think it just needs a little bit more work so you can see here I'm going around really working through that base of the cactus into the pot base And don't worry about disturbing or spoiling the shape of the pot base. That will be sorted out once we pop it in. But just don't skip this you know, on this bit. Make sure it is nice and firm. And watch your fingers. Obviously you've got these fingers here and you've got that needle poking through. So be careful. If, you, if you've if got finger protectors, then probably this is a good time to use them. I never use them, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't. I just, I can't work with them. I find them, they, they really irritate me and I find them a bit cumbersome. There we go. So that's nice and firmly attached. So then what's going to happen is you're going to pop, see how much bigger than the pot it is, but that's good. You want it bigger than the pot because what you want to be able to do is to actually push that in so you're not actually going to see much of that and then we can just pull that up a little bit and can you see how that's going to sit really firmly and nicely in that pot without tipping over so that's worked out really well so I'll take that back out so now we're going to put on our spines I won't do all of them because the spines do take a while but they are worth taking time over if you want the spines, you may not. You can be really precise, like I have been on these. So I've done a line down each segment. So that's why as well the, the segments are quite important. It adds a really nice detail, especially if you're not adding the spines. But if you are adding the spines and you want them in really nice sort of symmetrical lines, then it gives you a nice guide as well. If you want to be a bit more random, then you can just sort of stick them any way you wish. So I am using, this is a bright white wool top. Just trying to compare it to the other wool. So you can see, you can see the difference between the two here. And that nice bright wool will really stand out against that green. And you're going to use tiny, tiny, tiny strips Move you over here. So peel off a really sort of really thin amount. You really don't want much. And then not necessarily in the middle because we're going to use all of this for that. We're going to use this for, for several spines so we don't waste anything. Just check I've got my scissors to hand. Yep. So pinch in the middle and what this also does if we do it this way we double the spikes 
So we get twice the spikes in, in, in half the time rather than just putting one piece in. We do it this way. Mat that centre piece together, fold it over, twizzle in the middle. And can you see there where I've twizzled it? It's matted together. You're going to pop that. Well, I pop mine in the center of those lines and just going to push that in with your needle. That's it. And then what I'm going to do is this is when you can cut wool because when we're not going to be using the cut edges, you can just trim that off. Don't trim it too close, but you don't want them too long either. You can come back and trim them later anyway. And can you see? Move that. We've created that nice. Fine. Using the same wool, move down a little further again, twizzle, twizzle. So what you've got is you've got two pieces like that and directly under the one that you've already done but a little, I don't know, maybe uh, you can go as close as you want but I'm going about a centimetre just so that they don't all become, uh, they all sort of meld into one and poke straight down and there we go and then trim and the same again so you get three or four spikes out of this one probably three so again fold in half twizzle and you can see you've got those two pieces there and continue you can wait until you've got them all in to trim them but I just find they get in the way so I like to trim them as I go they might be a bit long but that's okay so I'm going to do another piece now so I'm going to take another shortish piece of the white wool I'm not going to do the whole cactus, by the way, just in case you were thinking that she's going to take forever to watch this video. Um, I'm just going to do a few and then you can finish those off after you've watched the video. And so you see, we've got this nice row going through and then you would continue doing that. On the next segment, hold it there, in with your finger, pop it down, down the middle, trim and carry on. I probably left too much of a gap there, probably have them a bit um, closer together, but you get the idea. So then you carry on until everything is covered or until the area that you want covered is covered or you do them randomly like I have in this one. And then we're going to add the flowers, which I absolutely love because they're so vibrant. You know, the, the cactus is in a really sort of stark environment, a harsh environment. Then you've got these beautiful flowers that just seem to come out of nowhere. And the juxtaposition between the, the, the flowers and the, the cactus and the, the harsh environment they're in, I think it's just is gorgeous. So I have here three colours that I have used. And I am going to, I think I'm going to use the yellow in the middle and I've got this really nice um, peach. And this is like a coral. So I've got a peach and a coral. You don't want much. I'm just going to pull a wisp off. These are wool tops and I'm using wool tops for these because wool tops are, are really good for how I am going to create this flower. So I've just got two pieces of wool there, you know, three, four, however many you want, or just one single colour. And then put them, pinch them between your fingers and just mat together. So you kind of just twisted it together. 
just makes it easier. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop that flower slightly to the side. You see where I've matted that? Just hold that like so in place and then just really sort of go at it and get that felted in. That's it. Can you see how that's really working in there now? And then what you're going to do, well, this is this is one way I like to do it. Um, with this one, I've got, you've got, so this is how I created these. So we're going to pull all those lengths out. I'm going to move them around. In fact, you can do that with your needle. So just move them around and then I'm going to trim them you can you can trim them afterwards but I think I'll trim them now or you can even leave it you know completely crazy like that which is is kind of cute really but we've got a bit of a contrast going on as well between that peach and that coral and then I'm just going to go around and just trim it kind of evenly get rid of the loose stuff and then I'm just going to separate with my fingers and I'm just going to twizzle you can't be a bit of twizzling when you're needle felting you can create all sorts of shapes and detail with a bit of twizzling And can you see how that is transforming that? I do actually really like that soft, sort of cute fluffiness um, that we have, which I kind of got on that one, which is sweet. But I am, I'm definitely a Twizzler. Really firmly. And then just separate those out again. You might want to. Definitely worth taking your time with this and just getting it how you want. It's not difficult, you've just got to take your time. And there, that looks lovely. And then if you want, you could maybe have a few shorter ones. And then again, just twizzle those ends. And that's perfectly okay like that, but if you wanted to add even more contrast, I'm just going to take a pinch of this yellow. I'm going to again twizzle. Felt that right into the centre there, can you see? Make sure you don't pull those flowers in whilst you're doing it. And then I'm going to trim those quite short, really close to the sort of base of the flower. So you've got a little bit of spiky contrast going on there, which is quite nice. And that's, that's it for your flower. With this one, I didn't bother twizzling anything, I just left it, it's kind of, it's pre-open. So, you can see that hasn't quite opened yet. So I just left that on like so. And then on these, um, this is yarn. And this is a really, really nice detail to add, which I shall show you. I'm just gonna go back and twizzle those. If I can find my little bit of yarn. So here we go, this is some lovely sort of peach yarn and all you're going to do is create little loops see what I'm doing there 
just in your fingers. You can do this on the cactus as well. And then I'm going to see why it's all bunched together there. I'm just going to pop that area that I've bunched together there. And I'm really going to poke that in with the needle so it holds. I've got a bit of loose wool there, so I'm just going to take that end, poke that in. And you can have these as long or as short as you wish. So I'm going to create another loop there. Just poke that in. Remember when you are doing it though, that you will shorten it as it pushes in. So I want something a bit longer here. So I am going to and go. You want everything kind of poked into the same area. You don't want it spreading out. You want it to look, you know, as if it's it's all central. And then another loop there. And can you see how that's creating that nice sort of shape? And then I'm going to come over here. So we've got that really nice flower going on there. Trim that off. Might leave a little bit loose so I can maybe do one more. And try not to push in the loops that you've created as you create your next one. That's why I kind of like to bunch them together before I pop them in. And there we go. That looks really nice as well. So that is it. And then once completed, you pop that in, squish it into your pot so it's nice and secure, and that is it. That is how you make these beautiful cactus, or cacti, should I say. And also, if you want to do something slightly different, if you wanted to go, um, I've seen some of these sort of ball-shaped cac cactus, which look um, really, really sweet and um, really vibrant and full of colour. What you just do is that when you created that base, you just do exactly the same to make them a little bit rounder and cover them in the, the colours of your choice and decorate them and do that the same way. So that is it. That is your cactus ready for its use as either just decorative, it will never die, you will never need to water it and it's a great felting needle holder. So I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me.